Chairman Ellis. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning to uh, both of you. My first question is for uh, Ms. Lago, and it has to do with the um, carbon efficiency advantage that the U.S. enjoys over China. I'm looking at a table here based on data from the International Energy Agency, which shows the uh, carbon efficiency advantage index between the U.S. and China at 3.2 in our favor. Um, and um, with a carbon advantage like that, uh, Ms. Lago, what would you expect if we were able to deploy a border adjustment for carbon emissions One thing I can think of. with China? Presumably, you, that would confer a pretty significant advantage on American trade, exports, and manufacturing um, if, in fact, we are about a third as carbon intense as China. Thank you, Senator, for raising an issue that touches upon a number of different facets. One is highlighting the fact that among China's anti-competitive and trade distorting practices are the fact that many of its industries operate not in accordance with the environmental standards that our country prides itself on. Second, in highlighting our carbon advantage, it suggests that there are opportunities for U.S. businesses to take advantage of the technological edge that we have here to create new markets and thus new jobs for Americans. With respect to the border adjustment tax, were I to have the honor of being confirmed, I would look forward to learning from you and your staff and from the experts at the Commerce Department more about this so that I could then have an informed discussion with you. But as a basic proposition, if China is now getting away with essentially free pollution at a ratio of three to one compared to American competitors, that gives them an unfair advantage against their American competitors, does it not? Thank you, Senator. The importance of holding China to its international obligations can't be overstated. And again, if confirmed, I would look forward to learning more about this border adjustment. So last question to uh, Ms. Wang and also to Ms. Lago, if there's time. Uh, pirate fishing, illegal fishing, IUU fishing, it's often called, uh, amounts to about a third of the fish taken out of the ocean. It's a pretty big deal. Um, China is very involved in predatory fishing practices, outraging many neighboring countries with their practices in their sovereign waters. The result is intense damage to our oceans, a common resource for the world, and also intense damage to U.S. fishing interests, which have to compete against these unfair cheating pirates. Um, and yet, that doesn't seem to get much tension in our trade conversations. Can you express to me what your level of interest and engagement will be to suppress IUU fishing if you're confirmed to your positions. First, Ms. Wang. Senator, thank you for the question. Uh, the issue of uh, pirate fishing, including its use of forced labor in that, uh, is, a, is an important issue. And one that I would note that Commerce's Enforcement and Compliance Office of Policy and Negotiations has been working with the interagency, including U.S. Trade Representative, uh, on the fishery negotiations. And if confirmed, I would uh, look forward to learning more about this with the interagency and seeing what ENC's role can be in it. Thank you. Ms. Lago, you have 30 I would seconds. Echo Ms. Wong. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I would echo Ms. Wong's comments and would also note that if confirmed, I would also look to Commerce's Industry and Analysis Unit, ITA's Industry and Analysis Unit, to see how their skills their tools can be deployed to address this issue. Thanks. Uh, 
to anybody listening, your Sherpas and all, um, I would suggest that we need to do a much better job at getting ahead of this. And um, that those of us who are from coastal states that have fishing communities are getting increasingly fed up with the low priority that pirate fishing receives from administration after administration. Thank you. <laughs>